Today on Alvarez TV, we are looking at the Grand Auditorium. In fact, we're looking at a bunch of Grand Auditoriums, mainly for our new Masterwork series, but we're discussing why people like them so much and why they're so good. And where did the shape come from? Join us to find out more. One, two, six, and nine, and twenty, three, and two. Perfect. Was that, that was that? deliberate. What was that? <laughs> Experimental <laughs> jazz. Was, was that the, that was the old... Like, doink. <laughs> just the perfect oh, way. Oh man, that was a bit different. What was that? What was that? I don't know what that was. I don't know how that works. Yeah. So it's going down a semitone, up yeah. to down, down, down again. Yeah. And it, I know it sounds a bit odd, but it doesn't mm -hmm. sound out. Does it? Or does it sound out? It sounds, it sounds interesting. <laughs> And down again, and down again. I like it. Hi everybody, <laughs> sorry about that. We tried something different, something new. We're not very good at it, but we're gonna practice. I love to count in. Did I count in? Uh, several. Several, yeah. that's that maths thing I'm working on. Yeah, it was like a Fibonacci series or something. A little bit Fibonacci, a little bit um, Bayes analysis. Markov theory. I like that. <laughs> Mate, Here we are. what are we doing today? Today, it's all about Grand mm. auditoriums, right. our new lovely masterworks, grand auditorium, but, but generally about GAs mm. as well. Okay. And I've got something a bit interesting because mine is not a cutaway. Why are most grand auditoriums with a cutaway? How, how come you hardly see any like that? I know. Mr. Taylor's thing though, wasn't it? In the 90s? Yep. So Bob designed this in the 90s mm -hmm. and it's been a massive success. No doubt, it's very beautiful. And when you see it in a full body shape, it's so balanced. I hadn't played a GA mm -hmm. without a cutaway until we got some made, didn't we, for, a, for another uh, episode. We, we both were, actually. We picked Surprise. it up and very, very pleasantly surprised by the, by, by the, the resonant low end in it. Yeah. But also that lovely kind of, it's quite hi-fi. It is. I think you've got quite a wide bottom bout, mm -hmm. like a dread. Yeah. And then you've got a smaller top bout, up about. And you've got a more accentuated, deeper cut in the waist. Is the bottom bout the same size as the as our dreads, or is just it larger? About. Yeah, I think they're just a, just about the same. Mm -hmm. But then you've got a smaller upper bout, and you've got this this deeper cut in the in the waist, which definitely, as we've said before, mm. changes things. And we were having this conversation conversation early that we have we've been working on a new guitar shape, and we couldn't get it right. And I decided to move the sound hole. And I yeah. think, and then it came alive. And if anybody knows more about the science behind that, please, like the position of sound hole relative to where the waist lands in the sound hole. I think that's really, really important. Bob got this right. You know, it sits between an OM and a dread. It's attractive. It's, it's very good looking, curvy. Yeah. Why, when you move, I mean, slightly away from GAs, but this, the, the new shape that I know mm -hmm. I've, I've seen a couple of versions of that. And, and it is more successful since you moved the sound hole. I believe you sort of moved it back. I did. Right. Why and what changed about the sound for you? What was it about how that tonally changed that, that was more, oh, I've got this right now? I was trying to get air volume. Mm -hmm. It's quite a, a small but large, let's say a medium-sized guitar. And then when I played it, when I thought about how much air volume was going on with regard to the size of the sound box. I just thought we, there, was, there wasn't enough low end. I didn't know why and I just, I felt disappointed. I thought it wasn't really gonna work. 
and then I got the so, first oh, sample. So the sound hole was moved more towards the sort of treble end of the guitar. Yeah, so it, it kind of looked slightly odd. And then I just, it, you just, you know, I, I guess there's all a sort of balance going on. Yeah. And then I just moved it back on you by about six or seven mil or something. And it just, everything fell into place. Yeah, no, I, it, it, it's aesthetically more pleasing. Because I know when I it's saw it. It's aesthetically more pleasing. Yeah. The science behind the, where the sound hole is relative to where the waste falls in it. So this is right in the center. You know, if you draw, draw a line from right in the middle of that cutaway, yeah. it's like landing in the center of the sound hole where mine was landing towards the back of the sound hole and that was throwing everything off. And it will be all the science around where the braces are relative to each other. Mm -hmm. But it was a big learning curve for me and I'm sure people have more experience in, in getting those things right. And if you've got a comment on that, I would love to know. Mm. But going back to, to GAs, you know, they've been incredibly popular. They're very versatile. They're good on stage. You get great trebles. And you, you don't get the, you know, that, that oomph you get of a dreadnought, which yeah. is all right, especially live, I think, in recording. But you don't get the bass of dread, dreadnought. Is it the same scale length as it? Same scale length, yeah. Right. Yeah. So 25 and a half or 648 mil. But it's, it's clear, you know, there's lots of clarity, but it has more body and projection and volume and OM. It has, a, it has a nice balance about it. It has that kind of like, almost like that smiley EQ yeah. about it. It has, yeah. it has nice, yeah. nice trebles and, and nice low end. With the new line, we've, we've we sort of ventured out mm -hmm. and we've got more Grand Auditoriums, especially in Masterworks. Yeah. And, and actually, we've got a few in, um, a few more in Art Series as well. So in Masterworks, now you can get Mahogany Mahogany, mm -hmm. you can get Cedar Rosewood, which mm. this thing is really nice. Lovely. And then we have a custom. So we've talked about our custom a little bit. So this is a new Masterworks. It's a front bevel and the back bevel, abalone and uh, shadow burst, new finish, etc. It's got the hi-fi in. So lots of nice appointments on that one. That's the new LR bags. Sort of sensor, bridge plate, yeah. sensor mounted pickup. So I think what we'll do is, um, Please give us your thoughts on Grand Auditoriums or body shapes in general. I think to me, because I, I'm such a dreadnought player, I am sort of becoming more open-minded towards different uh, size guitars, especially the new one. You know, you get pl players who love OMs and love dreadnoughts. And I think the Grand Auditorium is still fine its place in those historic yeah. shapes, yeah. but no doubt super popular, but why? You know, and I think that's a, that's a good, great, great question for the community. And um, we'll do some, so we've got a mahogany mahogany, a Sitka mahogany. Yes. A cedar, cedar rosewood, rosewood and a Sitka rosewood. And Dee's going to play a few chords and a little bit of picking and, and you can hear the... the, the Maybe the, not the jazz. The, no jazz. Possibly not probably the jazz. Probably enough today, I think. We jazzed out. He was scatting earlier. Tonight. I was... <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> Cheers, See you everyone. next time. Cheers. Bye-bye.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. If you want to watch more videos like this one, click the video on the screen now.